Hello and welcome to uh, what's going to be a new series for the, the channel. Um, it's going to be fly time for beginners. Um, basically I'm going to take you through all the steps to becoming a fairly good fly tyre. Um, and it's aimed at the novice that's never really picked up any of the tools before. Um, so we'll be going through a little bit. I'm explaining the simple tools that we've got here. Um, for example this bobbin holder with the thread the vice that we've got um, and start right at the basics laying the thread down on the hook um, and we'll take it from there so today we're going to tie a really really simple fly um, it's a little blood one with sit here that's what we're going to be tying just a very simple blood one now it uses a ganza ribbon and that's the only material that's in it um, and it's on a curved hook as well a great little fly for early season. This is just the most basic one. It's just a layer of thread, and then wrapping up the um, the organza ribbon to create the body. Another version of the fly that you can do, which is a little bit more complicated, but once you've got the the basics of that one, be an absolute breeze to tie. Is this one now? This has got an underbody um, of uni mylar. It's the pearl tinsel, and then the body is ribbed. Um, so that you can see that through it. Now that gives it a kind of translucent look. What we're trying to imitate here is the bloodworm, which is the early stage of a midge. Um, and what happens to the midge in the early stage is it fills up with gas, and the gas gives it this sort of translucent, shiny look. And that's what we're trying to imitate here with the mylar. This works really, really well. Um, but the basic one, it works just as well. This is a good little fly to have. So is this one. So once you learn how to dye this one, this one will just be a breeze. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start to tie very, very, very basic blood one. So what I'm going to use is this. Now this is a bobbin holder. Okay, and I'm using the TMCO bobbin holder. It's a ceramic one. Basically what that means is that way the thread comes out is made of ceramic. It's not made of metal. The ones that you get that are made of metal, and I've got one here. This is a vineyard one. Now what can happen is the metal round here can become um, sharp and you'll end up fraying your thread. It's not so bad with the likes of the uni thread which it's in the name, it's one strand of thread. Once you get on to using threads like UTC which is a flat thread, you can see the top, tip of it's fanned out there. This is a flat thread and it's full of thousands of little fibres, made up of thousands of little fibres and what happens is if you're using this and it's got a little sharp bit on it when you're winding it onto your hook, you'll end up cutting the thread and you'll be getting frays coming out. Now that'll weaken it and it'll also ruin the, the overall appearance of the fly. Typically you're using a flat, flat thread like uni, um, like UTC sorry, on a, a buzzer where you're going to varnish the body. Now if you're varnishing the body and you've got strands of threads coming out everywhere, it's just not going to work, it's not going to look right. Um, so that's why we use a, a ceramic bobbin. They're a wee bit dearer, specifically this one, I think it's about £20 now. Um, you can get them off eBay. You can get the cheap unbranded ones off eBay and I'm told they work just as well. So I've had this for years and it works great. Um, next what we're going to use, I'm using light olive thread. Now you can use a thread, if you've, if you, a red thread. If you've got a red thread, use it. I don't have any red thread at the minute and I can't be bothered going to the shop to get some. So I'm just going to use this. What I have got is a red pen and at the end of the fly when I'm doing the head, I'm just going to colour the thread with this is a, a ruby, this is a pro marker by uh, Windsor and Newton and basically that will give you the red head simple as that see if you're having loads of spools of thread you can just use this if it's only going to show up uh, during the head of the fly then there's no real point in having another spool of thread there if I'm not going to use it now the body bodies are Ganza ribbon now I get this stuff from the range um, it's just a nice ribbon, it's like a net ribbon, but it's held together at the side with these two, what do you call that, I suppose it would be an embroidered side on it, and that's what we're using to, to wrap it round the fly. Now we're going to cut this down short so we get a nice fine herald on one side. So that's how we're going to start uh, the fly just now, we're going to basically prepare this and get it ready for tying. What I'm going to do is cut off a length. Now once you've got a length of the ribbon, I'm going to cut it down the middle. And 
nice sharp pair of scissors helps with this. There we are. Cut it down the ribbon. Now the middle point, what we've got here is one of these sides, and that's going to be effectively our stem that we're going to use to tie it onto the hook. It's also going to hold the fine heron. Now, this heron is far too much, so we're going to cut this down. And I'm using a size 14 hook. The hook I'm using is a full and mill, and this is a super grub. This one here. Great little hooks. So I'm going to tie this, tie this in. Okay, so I cut this down until it's about a millimetre in length. Okay, so just holding it like this, coming in. Cutting it down. Yeah, that'll do it. And that's what we're left with. Now all we need to do is get a dubbing needle. So in this case it's just a, an exacto knife with a pin on the top of it. This works really well. You can just replace the pin once they get gummed up. And all you're going to do is go in and pull away the fibres here. Get a dubbing knife in, put it away and you'll see these strands coming off. Take them away and throw them. that is that and that is going to be your body for the fly. I don't know if you can see this under the light on the camera but it's got a sort of translucent look to it on its own. It's kind of shiny in some areas and that again helps with that gaseous form that we were talking about earlier um, through the bloodworm. Works really great on the fly. kind of see it there I think. So we'll put that to one side just now, that's for body material ready. When you're tying a fly, it's all about planning and preparing. Have everything sitting so that you're not rushing away getting anything at the last minute. Have everything sitting. So before we've even tied this fly, we've got the body material ready. Now this is the only material that's in the fly, um, other than obviously the pen that we're going to use to colour the head. But when you start the fly, make sure you've got everything at hand and you can just tie the fly in one go, get into a right swing of it. You're not getting up off your desk to go to wherever you store your fly tying material to look for new stuff. Basically have everything ready. If you're using Dublin, using a hackle, make sure it's all there. So we'll set that to the side. Now, laying the thread down onto the hook, this is the surprisingly hard part for newbies. What we're going to do is get a bobbin holder, and the way you hold it is just like that, in your hand. You're just placing it in your hand. I think they say it's like a handshake, so if you hold it like that, just imagine it's another hand and you're going to shake its hand. You've got a bit up the top here, that's where your finger and your thumb go to hold it. Now when you're tying, you can adjust the pressure that you're putting on the thread with the bobbin, just by squeezing. So depending on where you're squeezing here, or how hard you're squeezing here, will depend on how much pressure you're going to put and how much tension you're putting on the line. Obviously if you're using an 8-0, it's quite a thin thread, so you don't want to put too much pressure on it, but again, you don't want your wraps being loose, they need to be nice tight wraps. So to actually put it on the hook, what I do, and I've always done this, is just wrap it once around my finger and that creates a nice tight anchor point. Now, take it round the back of the hook, okay, so we're putting it round the back of the hook, and then bring it over the front, a couple of wraps down, and then you're just starting to wind it round and wind it back. Now I keep this tag end nice and tight, and you'll see I've got the tag end about 45 degrees from the shank of the hook. And what I'm actually doing is I'm bringing the thread over and it's going on top of the tag end of thread here and then it's sliding down to touch the next the next turn and it's a great method to get nice neat touching turns you can really throw thread on at 100 miles an hour using this technique you don't need to obviously nice and slow works just as well make sure you're getting the wraps nice and tight good touching turns we're bringing it down now. With these curved hooks, you need to just be careful you don't catch the thread on the eye of the hook. Eh, sorry, on the point of the hook. So all you do is just adjust the angle that you're winding the thread onto. And again, with this tag end, bring your thread over onto the tag end and it will naturally slip down and meet the next turn. 
you can see it's happening there. Jumping over onto the tag end and it's just slipping down and meeting the next turn I said. Now you want to take it down to, we'll see around about, around about there. Now at this point I just snap this off. Simple as that. Alright. And that's basically, that's your body of thread bound down. Can't stress how important it is to put a nice, clean, neat and even body of thread down. This is where you're going to be lying all your material on um, later on to tie the fly. It's not really important for this simple fly, which is why we're tying this simple fly today. If you don't have this down, then you can still tie the fly and it'll still work just as well. But really do aim to try and get as smooth a body as you can. If it's lumpy and bumpy, take the thread off, start again. And keep doing that until you can get a nice even body of thread with nice good touch and turns. Now it doesn't matter if there's a bit of the shank showing through, there's a little tiny bit there. You, that doesn't matter. As long as you've got like, a nice uniform even body of thread down. So I'm going to take my material. And now that we've cut it to have a fine hero on one side. All I'm going to do is take my scissors and trim it a fine bit of hair all away. To reveal the stem. Just like that. And that's what we're going to use to tie it in. Now, to tie in material, whatever hand isn't your winding hand, so in this case I'm right handed, so I'll use my right hand to wind the thread on. I'm going to take it in my left hand and pinch it between my fingers and you want to just line it up for where you want it to go now as soon as you start tying the fly you should be thinking about where the head of the fly is going to go you want a neat head on the flies so what you do make sure you've got a nice length there so if I hold this against it you can see the start of the herald is here and the thread is here so that's what I want I want the start of that herald to be butted right up against the thread there and now the length the length goes right down and it'll curve round to the eye now what you're looking for is the length of the eye of the hook again at the back all right and that'll give you the ideal um, width for the head so what we've got there is absolutely fine now again pinching it between your fingers and pinch the hook as well okay so you're pinching the material pinch the hook and then take your thread up, make sure this is nice and tight keep a constant, you don't want to be going like this because you can see it jumps up All right. keep it nice and tight, bring it up now pinch the thread so I've now got the thread, the material and the hook pinched between this finger which is why I can let this dangle loose I then pull this over and down and that's a pinching loop and that's now secured to the shank by one, one loop now I'm just going to bring the thread over again and again. Minimum of three turns to wrap anything in. Three turns is going to be a really good starting point for where you can, it's going to be nice and tight so if you accidentally knock it it's not going to move and with three turns you can easily have a look at the fly. If you've got a rotary device you can have a look at the fly. If you don't have a rotary device then obviously just move your head round the, round the fly to have a look at it. But that's good, I like the way that's looking. So what I'm going to do now, start to wrap the thread up. Now just take your time with this when you're starting out. What you're wanting to look for is nice neat turns and keep the thread, keep the thread nice touching turns but also stop the material from rotating round. So if I put it this way, as I'm winding you'll see the tag end is starting to rotate round with the direction that I'm winding the thread. You can see that there. Now again that doesn't really matter on a fly like this because we're not particularly interested in a smooth body but it's a good it's a good thing to set yourself that no matter what tie you fly what fly you tie rather you have a nice smooth body that way you don't need to worry about when you need a smooth smooth body and you're not getting one so all I'm going to do is just keep coming up every couple of turns just adjust the, the tag end so it stays on top just like that now you don't particularly need complete touching turns, you can see I've left a bit of the red showing through just as long as it's uniform alright as long as it's nice and uniform you can get it and there we are run the thread up 
and we'll spot the thread there. Now that is our head, so there's the eye, and there's the eye width behind, and that's what we're going to look for. Now, the way we're going to wrap this is you can use a hackle pliers. Um, if you can fiddly with the fingers, then hackle pliers are great. They're the kind of traditional style ones. You've also got these rotary style ones, they're good as well. Hold on to them and basically wind them on. Or you can just use your fingers. Fingers, it's just as easy as any, and you get a lot more control over it. So we're going to wrap it in the same direction that we wrap our thread. So for me, I'm right-handed. I start underneath, come towards me, and then go over the thread, eh, over the hook. And I'm going to do exactly the same with this, and I'm going to pass it from one hand to the other. Now what I'm doing with my left hand here is I'm moving the bobbin out of the way every time I bring it over. So I've done a wrap underneath, switch over to my right hand, and I'm going to bring the material over the hook, round the hook point, and then grab it with my left hand. Now my left hand, my pinky and my ring finger are actually moving the bobbin out of the way. I think it'll probably be out of the camera. But they're actually moving the bobbin out of the way just to keep the thread there, to keep the thread away from what I'm doing. Now again, into your right hand, bring it over, into your left hand, right hand, under the hook, over, right hand, under the hook, over, right hand, under the hook, over, under the hook, over, so on, so forth. And we're just going to bring it up. Nice touching turns. Take the fly going. It's a little bit tricky once you get up to the tag end. Now, if the end gets too too short and you're struggling to grip it, put your finger on top of the shank and you can let go of the material completely. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay? And then, you can change hands. So now I can switch over to the right hand. And bring it over. Put my left hand on top. Switch over to the right hand again. Put it on top until we reach the thread. Now, this bit is a tricky bit, and I'll try and angle the fly towards you so you can see it. So now you're looking at it from the viewpoint that I've got. So I'm going to hold the tag end up in my right hand, make sure I've got a relatively short length of thread coming from the bobbin, so I've got about an inch and a half there. And what I'm going to do is bring the bobbin up put my thumb onto the thread and I'm going to use that to create the tension that I want and I'm going to bring that over and once I've brought it over to there I can let go of this tag end I'm then going to use my index finger to hold the thread itself slide the thread down and at this point I'm just going to wind in some more thread make sure you keep the even pressure there slide your hand down into the normal position for the bobbin and then one, two there's your three turns. Alright, now that's held in place and it's now perfectly okay for you to rotate the vise or have a look round the fly to make sure that everything is sitting just the way you want it. Now what I'm going to do is bring the thread down to the eye of the hook, which is about there, and then I'm going to fold, fold the material these back. So fold it towards the back of the fly. The way I do this is just stroke everything towards the back and then pinch it. Now what you're going to do is come in with your thread at the front and start to put down some nice touching wraps working backwards. And this is going to be the size of your head, so don't do it too big, don't do it too small. Okay, that's about perfect. Gives you a nice head. Now take your waist piece and take your lovely sharp scissors, which mine are, and cut away the waist piece. Now that is basically the fly complete. What you do now is just go straight on to a quick finish. Or, if because you're a cheapskate like me and you're not using red thread, you're using permanent marker to colour the thread, then what I'm going to do is colour in about 3 inches of my thread, just for the red. There we are. Pull that down. And now I'm just going to start to wrap the thread back towards the front of the hook. And that's all I need, that's fine. 
Now what I'm going to do is whip finish the fly. Now I'm using a rotary whip finisher. I think this one's from Vineyard. Basically it's got the handle here and then this top part rotates. And it's very, very easy to use. What you do is take your thread, set your rotary whip finisher on it so it's facing yourself, your side of the thread. Now you see there's a little cut out here and there's a little hook here. Set it on top and now pull your thread up and round that little nodule. In doing that, you notice the whip finisher wants to rotate. Okay, so bring the bobbin on your left hand up towards the fly and now with your right hand you want to spin the whip finisher round so that the handle of the whip finisher is now sitting vertical or is now sitting horizontal in line with the, the shank of the hook. That will bring you automatically to this position here. Now all you need to do is make small circles just as if you're winding on thread really. A nice touch and turns to your forearm just making sure I cover all the head there. Now what you want to do is return the whip finisher to the vertical position. So take the handle, turn the vertical and you'll see the thread pops out of the little nodule here. Now pull it with your left hand, you want to pull it in, when you get to here take out the thread, then take out the little hook and pull tight. And that's it done. Your thread's now nice and secure on here. The only thing left to do is whack a bit of varnish or super glue onto the head and trim away your thread. Now that is a very simple fly. You might have noticed that the fly sort of changed looks throughout the video. That's because the video stopped. This was the original fly that we started tying and halfway through we've changed to this one because the video ran out. So I had to start again. Instead of tying it from the beginning, I thought hey, we'll just tie another one in. The magic of editing you won't know. Of course, now you will, because I've told you, but still, we'll gloss over that. So that is the fly. An excellent little pattern. Works very, very well. Fished on the point. I would usually fish this with about a 15 to 20 foot leader, and it'd be a part of a team of three or four flies. Um, five, well, maybe putting a bung on as well. Um, basically, this one on the point fly or the next dropper up. Blood one live in the bottom foot and a half of the water. Um, and they attach themselves to rocks or the ground, the, the bed of the river, the bed of the, the lake, wherever you're fishing, by a wee strand of silk. And they, fish, they, they swim like this and they attach themselves to it so they can't go anywhere. And this is how they feed. They just basically paddle away. So this one here, you want to get it down nice and low in the water. And because it's really translucent, under the water here, this goes almost like a glass effect, which works really, really well. Catches the fish's eye, catches a lot of light, whatever light there is down at the bottom of the, the lake bed or the loch or the river, wherever you're fishing. Um, it's a great little fly, I had a lot of success with it and coming into the, the start of the season, I know it's November now, but January, February, March time, kind of looking at really cold weather, um, this can be a great little fly, just until it warms up and then it moves on to the emerging cronomid pattern, um, which I will hopefully be tying in a few weeks time. So again, thanks very much for watching, this is going to be hopefully a new series on the channel, um, where we take the beginner that's never tied anything, never picked up any of the tools, straight through and teach them basically what they want to know. Um, all the ins and outs of fly tying to become a really good fly tire and, and produce flies of high quality that are not only going to catch fish, but are going to catch fish consistently and last. I've got flies in my box that are four or five years old. Um, flies in my box that the hooks will rot before the, the actual fly is unfishable. Um, once you get really good at tying the flies, using good quality materials as well helps. Um, it's definitely worth spending the extra bit of money on. Um, a good Mets ha ha a good Mets saddle hackle, for example, for, for dry flies. Um, it might set you back 50 or £60 pounds to, to buy it, but you will get tens of thousands of flies out of them with one 12 inch feather. If you're tying size 16 dry flies, you're going to get 100 dry flies out of that 12 inch section. If you're only using one or two tons of it here, you get absolutely loads out of it. Um, so definitely good quality products is, is, is the way to go. Um, combine that way with good high quality tying skills as well um, that hopefully we'll pick up over the next few weeks. So again, thanks very much for watching. This has been the very basic bloodworm.